I have the highly requested 2.7 liter twin turbocharged EcoBoost engine in this F-150 behind me. And I'm gonna take a deep dive into this engine and tell you guys what I think as a heavy duty diesel mechanic. Well, this is a 2022 F-150. Actually really like the front end on this. These lights are actually kind of cool. Love the color, this kind of dark royal blue. Um, this is a good looking truck. Good looking truck. As you guys can probably imagine, this is, a, this is not a rental. Someone actually owns this truck and I was lucky enough to get my hands on it. Pulled some strings, if you will, because you guys keep asking me to get this 2.7 liter EcoBoost and here we go, we got her. She's even the Sport 4x4 edition. It's a, uh, it's a nice looking interior in here as well. Got the big screen. It's a, it's a nice looking rig, but most importantly, let's talk about what's going on underneath the hood. You guys have been rightfully so screaming at me to get this 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine on the channel and well, here it is. Some of you guys have gone as far to even say that this thing is the best engine in the 1500 segment. So we'll have to see about that, but there's tons to cover with this engine, which is why I'm probably gonna do a mini series um, just to cover everything I wanna talk about with this engine. So buckle up because uh, she may be a little bit of a bumpy ride. Jumping right into it in 2015, Ford introduced this 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine nicknamed the Nano. And that is a perfect nickname because this is the smallest displacement engine Ford has put in an F-Series truck in 68 years. And at least in 2015, this is or was the smallest displacement engine put in an American full-size pickup truck since the Second World War. So the nickname Nano is pretty good, if I do say so myself. And well, traditionally, this market, the 1500 market, the American truck market, likes to have big displacement V8s. So Ford put their big boy pants on and well, they introduced the smallest displacement engine the American truck market has seen in a long time. Ford invested roughly $500 million into the Lima assembly plant in good old Ohio to build these Nano, these 2.7 liter EcoBoost engines. And like all EcoBoost engines, all nine of them, this one is no different. Ford intended this smaller displacement V6 to be able to compete with larger displacement V6s and even larger displacement V8s while saving fuel economy as well as producing less emissions. Now, oddly enough, this 2.7 liter EcoBoost shares no parts with its bigger brother 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine, which is interesting. This engine as it sits in this 22 F-150 is producing 325 horsepower as well as 400 pound feet of torque. The same torque figure as the five liter Coyote V8. However, this engine will produce that peak torque at only 2700 RPM, where that five liter will produce 400 pound feet of torque at 4,500 RPM. So that is a pretty big difference and it shows how quickly this engine is capable of putting out that power and torque when you need it. The Nano gets a lot of its power from the twin turbos strapped to this engine, putting out a peak figure of 19 PSI of boost and peak cylinder pressures of up to 2000 PSI. As of 2018, this engine comes with fully electronic VGT actuators, which is just gonna give you a lightning fast throttle response, almost completely eliminate any turbo lag. VGT is variable geometry turbo. Now variable geometry turbo kind of acts like a small turbo and a big turbo all in one. Um, you know, right when you're at the low RPMs in order to spool up quickly, the fins are closed. And then as you gain RPM, the fins open up and kind of act like a bigger turbo. So that's the gist behind a VGT turbo. This engine is a dual overhead cam setup um, with adjustable intake and exhaust timing. This is done via um, cam phasers. And I know that is a bit of a dirty word when it comes to EcoBoost. Basically what a cam phaser does is it can either advance or retard the engine timing. And it does that by shifting the camshaft. So that is the gist behind the cam phasers. And oddly enough, the cam phasers on this 2.7 liter EcoBoost 
are not failing as often as they are with the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, but we'll talk more about that in another video. Direct injection is another reason why this engine can pack such a punch. Um, direct injection allows this engine to be able to run 87 octane with those very high cylinder pressures because direct injection can spray a very precise amount of fuel and a very precise timing of that fuel um, to, to basically eliminate any detonation in the cylinder that would normally occur with those very high cylinder pressures. As of 2018, Ford has introduced port injection as well as direct injection to really help eliminate any carbon buildup issues that is normally associated with direct injection. So I really like to see that. This engine is also a completely square engine, meaning that the bore and the stroke are the exact same size. Um, unlike the big brother, the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, which features a larger bore than the stroke, this engine being completely square is an extremely versatile platform. Um, it's very balanced when it comes to low end torque as well as that high end performance. The list seemingly just keeps on going. This thing has a compact graphite iron block, which at the time in 2015 was really the first production gasoline engine to feature that type of material as the engine block. Um, compact graphite iron is extremely strong as well as light. Um, it's almost double the, the tensile strength of cast iron, almost 50% stiffer as well as almost double um, the fatigue strength of cast iron. It isn't lighter than aluminum. However, it features better vibration and dampening properties than aluminum. The beauty of compact graphite iron is you can use so much less of it. So it's almost double the strength of cast iron, yet it's so much lighter. Um, and usually this type of material is used in diesel engines. The Power Stroke uses it, um, Cummins uses it and as well as like race engines. So it is actually really surprising that a mid-level F-150 engine would have a compact graphite iron block. And speaking of the 6.7 Power Stroke, both its block and this block are both made um, in, in a specialty foundry in Brazil of all places. But the best part of this is that the main bearings are literally cast with that compact graphite iron block as a single unit, and then they are actually fractured um, to give you fractured main caps, which is just incredible. I mean, a fractured main cap or a fractured cap in general is the closest thing or it's the strongest union you can get between two pieces of metal that aren't actually one. So these caps look a little strange. They actually look broken and well, that's because they actually physically are, this was a complete piece of metal and then they are physically broken at factory to give you the bottom half of the cap. And that's what makes them so strong is because the metal grain lines up so perfectly, almost like a complete circle. That's what makes these things pretty neat as well as extremely strong, which is exactly what you need with a big diesel engine right there. Um, and so the fact that you have a compact graphite iron block, a compact graphite iron main cap that is fractured, that was literally cast as one unit, um, it, it's just it's just gonna give this bottom end extreme strength. Um, it's just, I've never seen anything like that in a mid-level gasoline engine. Now, in terms of the rotating assembly in this engine, it does amaze me how different both this engine and the 3.5 liter EcoBoost really are um, because this engine utilizes a diesel-inspired rotating assembly, diesel-inspired pistons, diesel-inspired connecting rods, where the 3.5 liter EcoBoost does not. Now, firstly, the 2.7 EcoBoost uses a bowl-shaped piston like what diesels use. This is a piston out of a 15-liter Detroit diesel, and you can see that bowl shape in the piston. And diesels use this because, well, direct injection, it just really helps to spread the fuel throughout the combustion chamber, and, well, um, that is why a lot of diesels run this style of piston, and the 2.7-liter EcoBoost is running a piston very similar to what this looks like. This engine also utilizes an offset connecting rod setup, almost like every other diesel engine does. Um, without getting into too many details, basically what that means is it gives this engine a great mechanical advantage because when you're on your compression stroke, your connecting rod is much closer to 90 degrees on the crankshaft, and it just allows the transfer of mechanical energy 
much better. It allows the energy in the fuel to be transferred into mechanical energy much easier. It also creates less friction between the piston and the cylinder wall, which again just means more chemical energy is transferred into mechanical energy that is physically turning the crankshaft. Um, almost every single diesel engine uses that because it's great at generating torque. Now these offset connecting rods are something that I really like in this engine. And when comparing this engine to the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, which it often is, it's just this engine with those offset connecting rods, it's just a fundamentally completely different engine um, than your standard connecting rods that are gonna be in the five liter Coyote as well as the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Those connecting rods are also using fractured caps, again, just to give this thing incredible bottom end strength. It, it is impressive what Ford has done with this engine. It is just not simply a shrunken down 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Ford has taken the time to engineer something completely different that just so happens to share you know, the name EcoBoost. Now, when I was towing with the 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine, I mentioned it felt like a diesel, it towed like a diesel, um, which was just a really good compliment for that engine. Now, this engine is probably gonna feel like a diesel when you tow with it, which we will do, um, but it is literally designed like a diesel engine, which I mean is right up my alley. And I just, I really, really like that. Another thing I really like about this engine is how much power it is outputting for its relatively small displacement. Um, if we take a look at something like the three liter eco diesel from Ram, that thing is putting out 140 foot pounds of torque per liter of displacement, at least in 2015. This engine was putting out 139 pound feet of torque um, per liter of displacement. Yet this is a spark ignition gasoline engine. So just incredibly impressive that this can, you know, be compared to a diesel in terms of torque per liter of displacement, let alone basically match it. Now Ford did admit that this engine was going to be directly competing with the three liter eco diesel from Ram. And I just, I really like Ford's approach of trying to find that diesel power and torque in a gasoline solution. Um, and I like that a lot as a diesel mechanic because well, <laughs> I deal with so many emission related issues every single day. And I tell you this way too much, but it's the truth. It's literally the truth. Um, emission systems are, they're not ruining modern diesel engines, but they're just making them so much more complex and the reliability is gone. They are just not reliable. And unfortunately it just, that is just the truth. They're not as reliable as they once were. And well, we can see that with things like the eco diesel. It was discontinued for good reason because it was riddled with problems, mainly due to emission systems. Ford's own three liter um, power stroke engine, aka the Lion made in England, um, was discontinued after three years of production. Now they claimed it was because of lack of sales, but I think in reality it was probably because it's just, they're just not that reliable with those emission systems. And so that's why to conclude, I just, I really like that Ford kind of went with a gasoline solution that does not have an emission system to try and get that diesel performance. And it seems like they've done a pretty good job. Now, don't get me wrong. These forced induction engines, these twin turbocharged EcoBoost engines are not without their faults, which we'll talk about in another video. Um, as well as these engines still are not gonna touch the diesels in terms of fuel economy. The three liter Duramax, the inline six, which I actually really like that engine. Um, it'll crush this 2.7 liter in terms of fuel economy. Even when looking at like horsepower, um, this thing's making 120 horsepower per liter of displacement, um, which is, is quite high. Looking at the bigger V8s in the segment, the 5.7 Hemi, it makes almost half that at 69 horsepower per liter. Um, the five liter Coyote, I believe it makes 80 horsepower per liter. So it doesn't even come close to this thing. Even the big daddy topper, the King, the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, it only makes 104 um, horsepower per liter. So this thing is making a ton of power 
for the size it comes in. Now, the third thing that I really like about this engine, and I've already talked about it quite a bit in this video, so I'll try and keep it short, but is just the strength of this engine. I mean, you get the composite graphite block, which is the mains are literally cast with the block as one unit. Um, uh, you know, you, it's just, you get your offset connecting rods, which again are fractured caps. The mains are fractured caps. It's just the bottom end strength in this engine is incredible, at least on paper. And it, it probably needs to be that strong because again, Ford is making so much power out of this engine, but it just, it, it is really cool to see, you know, again, a, a mid-level gasoline option in the F-150s come with such bottom end rigidity and strength. And that brings us directly to the fourth thing I like about this engine, reliability. Um, and I will be the very first skeptic when it comes to new engines, forced induction, twin turbocharged engines. But I mean, this engine came out in 2015. The second gen engine, which is in this truck, came out in 2018. And so far, there really has not been any complaints of major component failures on these engines. And I cannot stress enough, it is not perfect. There are issues with this engine, but in terms of major consistent component failures, there aren't any. And it's an extremely rare thing for me to say on this channel. Um, in fact, I think it's the first time I've said that. This thing seems to be very, very reliable, something that I would not have guessed. And so um, that surprised me and just happy to report that these things are reliable units. Now, the fifth thing that I really like about this 2.7 liter EcoBoost is the fuel economy. And I am very skeptical about the 3.5 liter EcoBoost in terms of fuel economy because that thing likes to drink. Um, so I was skeptical about this 2.7 liter EcoBoost. So what did I do? Well, we had to take it on a fuel economy run um, and that's exactly what we did. And this thing is pretty darn efficient. Now, finally guys, is the argument about longevity. A lot of people like to say, probably myself included, that a traditional naturally aspirated V8 will outlive a forced induction twin turbocharged engine. And on paper, that probably is somewhat correct. A twin turbocharged engine, it just, it is much more complex. There's a lot more things to go wrong in comparison to a naturally aspirated V8. But I think Ford has built something here that could potentially um, compete in terms of longevity with those naturally aspirated V8s. Only time will tell. So far, it seems to be going pretty well for this 2.7 liter EcoBoost. Ford has definitely showed up with their big boy pants on and uh, they're taking a big seat at the table along with those big displacement V8s with this tiny nano 2.7 liter EcoBoost. Um, hope you guys liked the video. That's my opinion. That's what I like about this engine. Like I said, we're gonna make a mini series and we'll talk a lot more about what's going on with this thing. Um, if you did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe. We'd love to have you on, We'd love to have you on board. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video, guys.